What's up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 36. And we're going to be working on our next sorting algorithm. Algorithm. This is going to be our bubble sort. And you'll actually notice that this is probably going to be a little bit easier of a algorithm to understand than we did before. And the reason is because I was trying to use a recursive uh, I was trying to use a recursive algorithm uh, to follow our Viganeer cipher so I could reinforce how recursion is used. Unlike unlike our uh, unlike our merge sort, the bubble sort, however, is going to be an iterative solution, and this one is just going to take a couple loops uh, in order to solve. And the first thing that I want to uh, talk about is going to be a, our swap. And this swap function is basically just going to take two numbers in a array or a list, and it's just going to switch the positions of them. And this is going to be very prevalent in our bubble sort. It's going to be the foundation of what our bubble sort is based on. Um, so let me explain the switch to you first. So if we have 9, 2, 15, and 1 as our array, and we wanted to switch the first number and the last number, basically, what we would have to do is copy the value of the second number uh, into the value of the first number. So we can do that by just saying, okay, the index at one, or the for very first index, so this could be zero, and this could be three. So we want to say the value of the index at zero is going to be equal to the value at index of three, which was the one. But we get 1, 2, 15, and 1. And then we could say, okay, well, we need our second value now to be equal to the first value. However, there's a little bit of a problem with that because our first value at this point has changed into uh, a 1. So we need to find a way to get this number despite the fact that uh, it's already been filled up. And we can actually do that by just creating a temporary uh, variable that holds this value in it. So we say that the temporary number is going to be equal to the value at zero. So this is going to be our temporary number. And then we can do the same thing that we did before. We'll just replace the first or the index zero uh, with the one that we had. So it would be one, two, fifteen, and one. And then we can say that the value of the index at three, which is this one, is equal to our temporary value. So we get 1, 2, 15, and 9. And that's the basic uh, idea behind swapping two numbers. And it's going to be how the bubble sort works as well. So the bubble sort, uh, the idea behind it is just to make sort of big numbers float to the top or the end of the list. Uh, sort of like how bubbles would in a bath or in a pool or something like that. Um, so we'll take the first example as being a list of two numbers. We're not going to do one number anymore because it should be apparent that a list of one number is considered sorted. Uh, so we're going to take our 9 and we're going to check it with the 1 right next to it. So we're going to check the index that we're at and we're going to check it with the index that's next to it. So we're going to check if 9 is greater than 2 and we know it is. So we're going to swap the two numbers using the swap formula that we have up here. And that seems pretty easy, so we're going to move it up to three numbers. Uh, using 9, 2, and 15, we knew that the first swap was going to be the 2 and the 9, so this is going to be the result of our first swap. And then it's going to check the 9 again to see if the 9 is greater than the 15, and it's not, so that's going to be the end of the second, or that's going to be the end of the second check. Uh, which doesn't perform any extra swaps. But there's going to have to be an extra pass of this because we're going to need to check if the first number is actually going to be uh, smaller than every other number in the list. Um, and you'll see what happens in the next example after this, but I just want to show you what the second pass looks like. So we knew that 2, 9, and 15 is going to be the result of our first pass. So that's what we're going to start with. So we start the first index, which is index 0, and we check if the 2 is greater than the 9. We see that it's not, so we don't swap the two numbers. And this is the reason I wanted to show you the second pass as well. Even though we don't swap the numbers, 
we continue on to the next index. And we're checking if the second index is equal to the third index, and or is greater than the second, third index. So since it isn't, we're not going to swap the two numbers. So this just ends up being the sorted list that we have in our bubble sort. So I'm going to move up to our four numbers. I'm going to do 9, 2, 15, and 1. So we knew that the first swap was a 2, a 9, a 15, and a 1 because we just swapped the 2 and the 9. But this is the first pass, so we still need to check the next number. So we had our we switched the index. So we knew that 9 is also not greater than 15, but we need to check if 15 is greater than 1. Uh, so we check if 15 is greater than 1, and we know that it is. So we're going to get 2, 9, 1, and 15. And this is going to be the result of our third pass, or our first pass. And because uh, the 15 is the last number and it's checking, or is the second to last number, and we're checking it with the last number, uh, there's no need to continue up to the end and check if 1 is greater than something beyond that because that would go out of bounds. Um, so moving on to the second pass, it's going to put in 2, 9, 1, and 15 as our uh, starting array. And it's going to just start at the beginning. It's going to check to see if 2 is greater than 9 and says it's not, it's going to leave them the same. And then it's going to check to see if 9 is greater than 1, so it swaps it. It swapped the 9 and the 1, and then we move into the third index. We check if the 9 is greater than the 15, and we see that it is not, so this is going to be the result of our second pass. The third pass is going to take our uh, previous array, and we're going to look at the beginning of it again. We're going to be checking if the 2 is greater than the 1, which it is, 1, 2, 9, and 15. And even though we know that this array is sorted, uh, the algorithm still needs to continue out because in larger numbers it might not be, or there might be one switch it missed in a different uh, set. So we check if the 2 is greater than the 9, and we know that the it's not. And so we'll just move on to the next number, and we check if the 9 is greater than the 15. And knowing that it's not, this is going to be the result of our third pass. So this is the basic intuition behind the bubble sort and the swap. If you look at the numbers and sort of see the placement of it, you'll see how the big number, like the 9, sort of just works its way up to the top. It sort of just floats up there. Uh, the 15 did the same thing until it was at the top. And the 1, since it wasn't as valuable as these numbers, it sort of just it sort of just sunk down to the bottom. And the 2 moved up and down as a, role, as a result of the 9 and the 1 coming in contact with it. So you know that even though there was a 1 way out here, it still affected the position of the 2 and the 1 in the end. And it floated its way or sunk its way to the bottom or top. Uh, so that is the basic intuition behind the bubble sort. In the next video, we're going to program it, and you'll actually see this is not a very hard algorithm to program. Um, so I hope you guys will stick with me for it, and I will see you guys in the next video.